What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. I got Cycle Fanatics up on the TV over here in the background, but I'm actually, I started to pack yesterday and I pretty much have everything packed. If you guys remember, I'm using the Rick Rack system and if you guys didn't see that video, definitely check it out because it this system is really, really amazing. So it's like almost like basically like luggage. It's like a suitcase, it has two wheels. And then all it is, is it has a frame underneath it and it gets locked in to the cargo rack and it's got two clamps. I put the Rick Rack lock on it. So this way, there's no way in hell this is going to come off. So I just wanted to bring this video to you guys and just let you know like kind of what I pack, what I I take with me on a trip especially if we're going to I guess an area or you know part of the state where there's like there's gonna be limited amount of like gas stations limited amount of phone service kind of like out in the middle of nowhere and that's pretty much how this trip is going to be in Maine. Maine is really rural. You guys also had a lot of questions about like what kind of phone mounts I use I'll show you guys what I take in my bags I'll show you guys like the camera gear that I use, but the Rick Rack bag is already pretty much packed. So what I normally take with me, like this is a five day trip. So what I normally take with me, I'm gonna take, because it's only five days, I'm gonna take like five of everything, five pairs of socks, underwear. I'll only, I'll take at least like six, seven shirts just in case I get sweaty or whatever or dirty. I'll have obviously the gear that I'm riding with for that day. I normally normally typically use my riding jeans at least twice. So I did take like two extra pair of jeans. I took some long sleeve t-shirts. I took, I'm gonna take a couple hats. Like this is the GoPro box that I use for like all of my, so it's nice and neat. Like all of my, let me show you guys with one hand. So like all of my cables and blocks, everything to charge my batteries, my cell phone, my watch, so that's pretty much in there and I keep that with me in the bag because everything that I'm going to need in the hotel room or in the house, whatever have you, on every single trip from now forward, everything that I need for inside that I'm gonna take in with me is going to be in this bag. So this way I just unhook the clamps, undo the lock, and basically take the bag off, lift the handle, and just roll it like a gentleman inside the hotel or what have you, wherever you're staying. We're actually staying at an Airbnb, like kind of near Bangor, Maine right on the lake, so it's really gonna be awesome. So I specifically chose that destination, so this way we're kind of in a radius, like a couple hundred mile radius of all our riding. We could have stayed at the shore, but then that would mean if we did a lot of riding west, it would just be back and forth every day. So I didn't wanna do that. So being centralized, like kind of in Bangor, we'll be able to hit our points and not kind of see the same thing twice if, if you get what I'm saying. So yeah, so that's what I carry in my bag. I have a pair of goggles because I'm actually going to be using this helmet right here for the trip. I'm not going to be using my full face. And the only reason why is I think um, it's just good. The scenery is going to be amazing. We're going to be stopping quite a bit. That's what we want to, to hit all the, all the sites, all the areas. And I just want to fully immerse myself in this main trip because it's really, Maine is truly remarkable. We did do a ride last year from Laconia into Maine. If you guys haven't seen that video, check it out. And we hit actually, we went from Laconia, about 300 miles from Laconia into Maine. And then we went north into Maine by Rangeley Lake Scenic Byway all the way close near the Canadian border. And it's just absolutely extraordinary, just absolutely beautiful. But now we're kind of gonna go uh, hit the coast of south all the way to like Nova Scotia, Bar Harbor, stuff like that. And then we're gonna be doing a lot of riding way north, but on the eastern side of Maine. So it, it's gonna be awesome, I cannot wait. And like I said, we're just gonna be in some really rural areas we're probably gonna be out of cell phone coverage for most of the time, but that's why I wanted to bring this video to you guys. So that's what I have packed inside the bag. I'm not going to close it up yet because I still have a couple other things 
that I still have to take with me like my laptop and a bunch of other things that I'm still actually using uh, just to make content for you guys during this week. So that's the bag system. Now this bag, a lot of you guys asked, this bag does have a rain cover for it, which I'm gonna be taking as well. It's got two pockets. So like on this side, like I got some face shields, I got some uh, sleeves and they basically just go over your arm up to kind of your shoulder. I have my Beyond Riders beanie cap right there just in case it gets a little chilly and it is supposed to get chilly. Believe it or not, the weather for that week when we're supposed to be there, it's only in the low 70s and actually at night and in the morning, it's gonna be in the low 50s. So it's gonna be, it's for me, it's gonna be perfect riding weather, but it is gonna be on the chilly side. So you definitely have to prepare. So then on the other side of this bag, it has another pocket right here, which right now at the moment, I do not know what I'm gonna be taking with me. So then this is what I have for this side. So as you guys know, mandatory air moto, air pump, right there for the tires, just in case. In this bag, I have my slime tire repair kit, and uh, I also have O2 cartridges right there, some air cartridges so I could fill the tire just in case. I also have a whole bunch of set of spare fuses, and right here I have a Gerber knife. I'm gonna leave links to everything, including this bag, and also all the links to all these items if you guys are interested in what exactly I'm using. And then for the trip, I always carry my knife with me right here. It's got a fire starter on it as well. Super sharp, nice sheath right there. It just clips on your belt. So I basically just take this stuff right here and I just stick it all the way towards the back and that's where it stays for the entire trip. Just nice and neat in the back. So then to finish off this side of the bag, let me, let me show you guys because this is the, oh, if you guys haven't seen, thanks to you guys, 100,000 subscriber plaque. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> but this is the bag that I use. This is by, this is a camera bag. What does that say, Tenda? But anyway, so let me show you like, the bag again is, is empty right now because I still, I'm still using the stuff to create the content, but I'm holding my Lumix S5 II uh, camera. I have a 24 to 105 f4 lens. That's what I use for home and also when I'll be taking it on this trip as well so I could get some great footage. But that camera goes here and then the controller for the DJI Mini 3 Pro goes here. My DJI Mini 3 Pro drone goes right there and then all the batteries for the drone go there, including my DJI Action 4 batteries as well. So all the batteries, everything will be in this camera bag. If you guys didn't know yet, so I normally use GoPro. I do not use GoPro anymore. I stopped using GoPro. I'll tell you why really quick. This might help you. <clears throat> so if you're vlogging and you're using a GoPro, any GoPro, I realized, if you're using the regular standard blue batteries, the cameras tend to lock up. And that's just the truth. It's not just me saying that, it's like thousands of people saying that. So what I always used was, if you guys aren't familiar with this, this is a Max battery right here from GoPro. So this is the Max white battery, it's white and black. This lasts a lot longer. And I, I seen and I noticed that I didn't get a lot of lockups on the GoPro with that camera. But then what I realized, and thank God I did, because I had it in my bag, the, one of the blue GoPro batteries actually swole up to like almost double size. I thought it was gonna explode. Um, so that's like another reason um, I noticed. The batteries were starting to swell. And then also the GoPro just locks up. Like I'll lose footage. You know, I'll turn the camera on, I'll try to turn it off. You can't turn it off, you gotta take the battery out. Um, so it, it's just, it's kind of been, um, and, and you know what, the interface is kind of like, like a little pain in the neck. So now the DJI Action 4 just came out and I just got it and I've been using it, but I've had a problem with the audio, so I had to switch the mics. 
I'll bring you guys that info if you guys are interested, but I think I figured out the solution. I'm gonna actually take the Hayabusa for a little errand run in a little bit right after I make this video and I'll let you guys know how that works out. But the interface on the DJI Action 4 is phenomenal. It's amazing. The camera, uh, the angle, the wide angle is far better than the GoPro. And I think the picture quality is better. The low light is better. So, so far, I'll let you guys know after this trip how I'll actually show you. Let me show you the camera. Uh, it's right here. Okay, so that's the DJI Action 4. So this is another, here, let me sit down. This is another awesome thing about this camera, which I hated about the GoPro. If you have the GoPro in the media mod, which you have to have on here, so you could connect the microphone to the media mod, otherwise you would have to use the mic adapter. It's like so much, like, so much extra steps. Like why did they have to do that? Like DJI now, you just connect a USB-C mic right into the camera and it works. You don't need a, a media mod, you don't need a mic adapter, you don't need anything. Another great thing about this camera is that if there is, this cage actually came with it. This is, I think, the action, the action package, if I'm not mistaken. So it comes with this camera and then it also comes with this charging hub with two extra batteries. And that's another thing is the battery life on the Action 4 is way better. So it's like all across the board, the action is way better. I'll let you know how it works. I know I tested the footage on the camera. It's absolutely amazing. It's beautiful. It's crystal clear. If you, th this actually, this case actually comes with it right here. If you could see that, that case comes with it. That is also awesome because you could actually mount it vertically to do 9x16s for TikTok and Instagram. So all in all, the whole experience of the DJI Action 4 is way better. But I think I was getting some audio crackling. Excuse me. I was getting some audio crackling. I had to lower the gain. So when I go out on this ride, I got to do an errand up in New York State. And then um, I'm going to do like a little moto vlog on a Hayabusa and see how the audio comes out. So that's what I'm using for action cam. I'm using the DJI Action 4. So then a lot of people always ask me, how do you get that footage, 360 footage, like going around? Like they, people think like I, I have a, a extra cameraman on the back. I don't. I use the Insta360 X3. That's a 360 camera. So if you see here, that little quick disconnect right there, that's a Ulanzi, U-L-A-N-Z-I. Ulanzi, you can look it up on Amazon. I'll have all the links down below in the description. But that's a quick disconnect. And this is what I use. It's just super easy to use. I just put it on here, it's magnetic. I turn it and the camera is on there, right? So this is recording like say my 360, if say we're doing a pass by other bikes or other bikes are passing by, I don't have to take the camera off to actually, you know, kind of point to where I wanna record. This thing is recording 360 degrees and then I edit that when I get back and I pretty much edit it to where, to the direction of what I want you guys to see. So this, I'm not sure what mount this is. I don't have my glasses on, but you could get this on Amazon. I'll also leave you guys a link uh, in the description. But this is great because it's adjustable. It clamps, as you guys could see, right onto the bars. Then if I unloosen this, I could swivel it any which way. But these quick disconnects, you see how easy that is? That's And then if I do want to take it off of the bike and kind of point it in any direction I can. Eventually, I'm going to get another action for it and leave it up here. That's what I used to do because I had two GoPros, but I only have the one action for now. But these quick disconnects, oh man, they're awesome. So this is what I mean by quick disconnect. If you take the camera off of there, then uh, uh, let me see, where, where do I have it? I don't know where I have it, but anyway, I have like, oh, like this, like this right here, let me show you which I'll be taking. So if I wanna put this camera, which I do on my buddy's bike, okay, so I just, I could stick it to 
the windshield with this GoPro and this this suction cup is amazing. I mean, you could go. <laughs> Hang on a second. I didn't put it on right. Trust me, it works very well. I just didn't put it on all the way. <laughs> you could you could go like a hundred miles an hour and it won't come off. But anyway, that's the GoPro suction cup, and then I have another quick disconnect mount on here. See, and that's why I like this so much because I could take this off of the suction cup mount if I want the camera on the front or if I want it on my buddy's bike, I could just take it off of here and put it right back onto there and it's not going anywhere. So anything that I can do to make my life easier, uh, recording and getting great footage and all that stuff, anything that I can do that will make life easier, shorten up the time, I'm going to do it. And I'm always, you know, trying to look for better, you know, better and quicker ways and more efficient ways, I, I should say. Because efficiency is the key, because think about it, I got an Insta360, I have my Action 4, I have my DJI drone, I have my Lumix camera, so basically the footage from like this main, main trip is gonna be coming off of four different cameras and possibly some even off of my uh, iPhone, iPhone 14 Pro Max. So it's possible that I could have five camera uh, recordings from five different cameras. So, you know, and, and then when I put it into the computer, which is right there, I actually just got that curved monitor, but I have the uh, mini with the M1 chip in it and curved screen, I think it's like a 32 if I'm not mistaken. And I use Final Cut Pro uh, 10 for my editing. I've been using that for a long time, just used to it and always looking to try to get better, but it takes a, trust me, it takes a long time to get good. And I'm nowhere near, you know, the, the, the great people that edit, but um, I'm always trying to up my game, trying to learn something new each time I edit or impl implement something new every time I edit. So that's the camera stuff, the Lumix S5 II, DJI Drone, Action 4, DJI, and DJI Mini 3 Pro Drone. So another reason why I like the drone is it's super small, super light. It is fantastic. It'll fly for about 30 minutes. Also, the camera goes from horizontal to vertical for your 9x16 uh, videos on Instagram and TikTok. So that's what's really cool as well. All right, so I got the bag. I told you guys about uh, the cameras that I use and how I set that up. And yeah, and like this, on, the nor on normal vlogging trips, like that's my setup right there on both of my helmets. I'll have the camera mounted, as you guys can see on my Rurox. But like I said, I, I just wanna be fully immersed. I'm gonna take the three quarter with me. I just want to get the smells, the sights, the sounds, and you know how it is. Like, I like I like wearing a half shell every now and then, but on a long trip, it just it really bothers your ears, especially with Mad Max's beautiful sounding loud exhaust with the Chromeworks and the 128. So that's just not going to happen. Um, I don't want my ears to be ringing. I will be taking some earplugs just in case because the first day we're probably gonna be doing like five, 600 miles. And after like 500, 600 miles, your ears start to tend to ring with a loud exhaust. But I'm gonna be using that helmet, so I'm not gonna be talking much because there's just, I'm gonna, we're gonna be off and on the bike, off and on, off and on, stopping for food, for gas, to look at, you know, the sights and wherever we stop. So. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be talking too much um, during the riding, but I'm going to have the action for that camera right there on my helmet. I'm going to have it on this handle, and that's basically what's going to capture most of the footing uh, footage everywhere, including us riding. So just going to change it up a little bit, uh, you know, on this trip and on this episodes of the main trip. So let me know if you guys are going to like it. Yeah, so then I put everything in this camera bag. And what's also awesome is I used the Rick Rack. If you, this is all Rick Rack. This is Rick Rack, this is Rick Rack, and 
Remind me to show you this awesome little gadget. But these rickrack buttons, see, I don't have any more wasted space and I don't have the hooks there. So my bag used to go in pretty tight, but now without those hooks, it just fits perfectly. Look at that. And believe me, the Lumix S5 II, all the batteries, the drone, the controller, everything goes in this bag. And then this goes in here and then I close it up. And that's how I have my stuff as far as the camera gear. That's what's in this bag pretty much the whole time on the trip. Because I, a couple of you guys were asking me like what kind of camera bag and I like the shoulder straps because if we decide that we need to hike like to go see something or we need to walk around, I just throw it over my back and it's so much easier on your back and you know, you, you don't, you're not gonna get tired. What else? So what do I keep? So I have this, oh, let me show you this other item from Rick Rack. Check this out. So a lot of times when I used to go into the gas station or I should say every time I take the gas cap off, I put it up on top of the pump. I go to reach it, it falls, it rolls down about 10, 20 feet. I gotta get off my bike, go get it. So check this out. There's a little button if you guys could see right there. That's a rubber coated mag magnet that is from Rick Rack. And listen, see that? And you leave your gas cap right on your tank. And when you're ready, like a gentleman, you just put it back on. So like these, it's like these little things that just help so much. Just make your life easier. Like here, the buttons again, there's nothing, absolutely zero in the way right there. I don't know if you guys could see it right there. Yeah. So let me see what else. So, okay, so on this side, I have a flashlight. This is a rechargeable USB flashlight. Okay, that's rechargeable. I want a rechargeable one. I don't want a LED, obviously, super killer bright. And then I have my rain gear. And then I'm also bringing uh, colder weather gloves in my Indy Ridge gloves. I got some Indy Ridge face shields in here. And then I also have my Kenimoto helmet lock. So these are pretty cool as well. Also links will be down below in the description because when you get off your bike, I don't want to carry my helmet everywhere I go. I'm already carrying like cameras and stuff. So I normally, what I've been doing now is just hanging my helmet off of my handlebar. And then I take this lock. It's got, if you could see like a big cable with a, a lock on it, right there's the lock. And I just lock it down through the, um, the I guess the riser right here and through the helmet so this way nobody nobody steals it so this lock always comes with me a link will be down below in the description for the Kenny Moto lock see this is the lock right here and it's really good because there's really no other place to lock your helmet on your bike so I like that little lock I will also have a clear pair of sunglasses just in case we get caught riding at night. And then like in the cubbies, like I have a selfie stick, I have a little charging port here. This is battery tender, so you could kind of plug it into there and then get USB power off of there as well. And I got some napkins, like I said, selfie stick. So in here, the good stuff, I got some Motrin, just in case I get a headache, some sunscreen, chapstick, and then this bag right here, this is, this bag is by, who makes this bag? Keurig. So this bag, I, I'm going to stick right here, basically my camera with the handle will go through there, and then I could close it for when I just want to grab it and use the camera. I also have like some chapstick and uh, a lighter and stuff, little, little tchotchke in there as well. But yeah, but that's, that's what I bring. I'm gonna also bring my sneakers with me, you know, just in case to move around if I wanna take a walk. I'm also gonna be bringing my Indy Ridge waterproof boots with me, not the vented ones, because I think Thursday we were, we're gonna be getting some rain in Maine. So you don't wanna be stuck with the, with the vented boot. I'm gonna be taking my Indy Ridge, um, my Indy Ridge solid boots. These are the new, 
look at this N new brand new night 3.0 fully vented love them got a whole bunch of indie stuff if you guys have any questions that's oh one more thing one more important thing which i have to find i think it's over here which i take with me is a jumper pack so i don't go i don't leave home without it on a big trip because you never know when you're going to need it so let me show you guys the jumper pack that i take so this right here is great for on so many levels inside is the jumper cables right here you see you plug there's the jumper cables that's the plug plug it into there and this is great because it could charge your phone has USB, USB-C. It could charge like a bunch of phones or a laptop and it can, uh, I gotta charge it. It's only at 75%, so I gotta charge it before I go. But this is great because you could also jump your bike just in case your bike, uh, your bike's battery dies. So that's super important as well. So I take that with me on all the trips too. Other than that, Definitely a thermos I bring with me all the time so I could just have some coffee. I bring it from home. This way I could have it for the whole ride there. I bring some snacks, some healthy snacks, some water. If we're hungry, we just kind of stop on the road. But let me know what you guys bring. Is there something that I'm missing? Is there something that you guys take that I'm, I don't have? Let me know, I'm really curious because everybody packs differently. Everybody takes different things. And I'm wondering if, uh, if maybe you guys are taking something also that's important that I'm not taking or just maybe a, you know, a whole bunch of different things that, that I'm not. Yeah, so just let me know down below in the comments. One last thing, I'll just have to go over Mad Max and clean her up a little bit. We'll use the spray polish to make sure she's nice and clean. Other than that, I cannot wait. We are so psyched to get on this trip. Looking forward to bringing you guys that coverage next week, Monday, it starts. Peace out, see you guys later, thanks for watching.